Well, well, well. Hello once again. Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're doing a vert violet. You guys know what that means. That means that we're doing webcam. We're doing lo-fi. We're doing low-key. And the reason why is because this is a first for a cooking with Tomo and maybe even a first for vert. I don't know. Is it true, guys? Yeah, I think it might be a first for vert, too. We're doing a vert violet to set up the actual event. Um, now, I did mention that the dough for the pizza recipe that we're going to make requires a several day fermentation time. So that's what we're going to do today. Right now, we're going to make the dough. It is very, very simple. Uh, the reason why I'm a little bit late is because I decided to do all the conversions for you guys, for the Europeans and for those of you without scales, because, well, I can't, I can't make you go buy a scale, I guess. Uh, but on that note, when baking, it's really important that you guys understand that when you're talking about baking, you're talking about science and weight is the best way to scale your ingredients because it's always going to be the most accurate. Uh, and it's okay. Um, so I told you guys to get bread flour and I told you guys to make sure that you have active dry yeast. Those are the only two things here that really kind of matter. You can use all purpose flour. Uh, the results just won't be quite as good. Basically bread flour is just thicker and it's less processed and it has more of the gluten, which is what you need, because gluten is the protein that comes from the wheat that creates the structure. Uh, and this is what's going to allow us to have a really thin, puffy, yummy dough. Uh, so bread flour, very, very warm water, active dry yeast and salt. Uh, now I posted a version of this recipe on Vert. I don't know if you guys have seen that yet. Um, and I'm going to explain that to you right now. Basically, there's a thing called baker's percentages, okay, where you can know the formula of something and, uh, oh, hey, it's Irma. You can know the, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> you can know the order, the, the formula of something uh, by just these percentages. So since flour in any dough is your primary ingredient, that is going to be counted as 100%, okay? So for this recipe, you need 16 ounces of flour, or two cups, or 453 grams. So that represents 100% of the weight of the other ingredients. So now, when you take the water, that's 65%, which is 10.4 ounces, one and a third cups approximately, or 295 grams. And then when you guys are doing this later, you can, you can check these percentages and see how you can alter the amount of flour and then therefore alter all of the rest of the ingredients. And it also explains why weight is really the best way to do this. Uh, moving on, salt. I prefer sea salt for flavor and also it's just you know less uh, steps from the earth to the table. It's better for you. Uh, this is 0.48 ounces by weight or one tablespoon by measure or 13.6 grams uh, by metric, okay? And that is 3% of the total weight. Then you have active dry yeast. I'm not using fresh cake yeast because it's a little bit more difficult to work with. And in general, I uh, prefer to use active yeast. It's more available, it's easier all around, and uh, just simpler to use and that's the reason why it, it the the people will argue that fresh cake yeast tastes better i i don't know if i totally agree with that i think it's all about the fermentation time which is what we're going to talk about in a second uh so yeast is 0.24 ounces by weight one and a half teaspoons by measure or 68 grams for metric and that makes up 1.5 percent of your total 100 percent. so 100 percent flour 65% water, very warm water, because you need that temperature to activate the yeast, 3% uh, salt, and 1.5% yeast, okay? Now you need salt in any dough to, to help kind of stabilize the yeast uh, fermentation. 
it's the yeast is a little bacteria that's going to break down the natural sugars that are in the flour to feed it and the salt helps keep that in check so this percentage here is kind of the thing that we use to make sure that that balance is correct okay so we are making this dough today instead of on the show day because it has a very long fermentation time. So what is that actually? The fermentation is the process of the yeast eating the sugar and creating gas in between the gluten, which is the protein from the wheat. Okay. That process creates structure. It creates the big kind of chambers that you see in bread and it also develops flavor. And so this is a, called a Neapolitan style dough where we don't need the dough at all. All of the gluten development happens in this long fermentation process. So normally for a lot of other lean doughs, which is what this is, you would, you would need the dough in a mixer by hand for a long time to develop those strands of gluten that create the structure. But in this recipe, all we're going to do is scale our dry ingredients. We're going to incorporate them to make sure that everything's evenly distributed. And then we're going to add the warm water and we're going to mix it just with our hands, just until there's no dry flour left at the bottom of the bowl. Uh, and then we're just going to cover it and we're going to let it sit for ideally 12 hours, but eight hours is fine as well. And then we'll explain what to do next. I've already made a batch so that I can show you what to expect since we obviously can't do another vert violet 12 hours later to do this again. So I'm gonna show you guys all the steps. This is the only time in cooking with Tomo where something is pre-made by the way. Uh, and it's just to explain. Um, how's the chat going? Is anybody asking any questions that I should look at? Am I moving too fast for anyone? I am gonna go slow. I just wanted to kind of start off with this explanation process about what we're actually doing here. Uh, so yeah, this Neapolitan style dough is a no need dough. And when I say need, I mean K-N-E-A-D, not N-E-E-D. So this is a, a, a dough that we're gonna make that you do not work at all with your hands until the day that we actually make the pizza, which is on the 31st right here. Um, er, <laughs> I know you guys see my Detroit Bad Boy shirt. Don't be jealous. That's right, I'm an old school kid. Back to back champions, 89, 90, 88, 89, I don't remember. <laughs> Something like that, man. Makes me feel old. Um, okay, so I guess we should just get right into it. Now, obviously bread flour is ideal because of its high gluten content. All purpose flour is, uh, is, will work, but the results will not be the same, I promise you that. Uh, the rest of it is very simple. So I guess we should just get right into it. I'm going to do everything by weight because I want the proper results. I recommend you all do the same. Um, but again, I will, as I'm going through the steps, tell you all of my conversions as well. So let me just kind of adjust my little camera here so you guys can sort of see what I'm doing. You're going to lose the face, but you're going to see the T, and that's what matters. Okay, so this is my scale, just a basic digital scale. I got it uh, at a store that sells food supplies. You should be able to see it pretty good there. You, what's important is that you have the ability to go between pounds and kilograms right here, and that you have this button that says tear. That is how you're going to scale your ingredients all at once on one bowl. Every time you click that button that says tear, it will actually uh, reset to zero. So as we're adding the ingredients to make sure that we have the proper weight, we'll be hitting that button in between. Um, if you guys don't have a scale and you're opting out of the weight way of doing this, then you know, you're going to use measuring cups and uh, things like that. So let's get started. I'll show you the flour that I'm using and you guys can show me the flour you're using later and pictures and photos and all that good stuff. So this brand right here is called King Arthur. It's, uh, you know, it's relatively available around here in the States. I don't know about the rest of the world, but it's a good brand. It's uh, not certainly not the best out there, but it's very available and it yields very good results. So I'll be using this for our cooking with Tomo event this time. This is my mixing bowl. I'm going to turn on my scale here, put this on, and it's going to show a weight. Oh, I already teared it. So you're, when you're using your digital scale, you have to obviously remove the weight of the bowl by clicking the tear button, which I just did. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go grams by weight here for you guys. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go metric today. So you just kind of scoop into the bowl until you reach your number. And for grams, the metric system today it's 453 grams. That's 16 ounces or one pound, or two cups by dry measure. Okay, so just get get yourself to that point. A little by little. And you're gonna see just how easy it is to actually make this and why this is a desirable recipe for making pizza dough. And other kinds of bread as well for that matter. With this same dough, you can make an Italian bread, you can make little little rolls and things like that. This is all really good stuff for that type of stuff. Okay, so I've got my, my, my flour here, 453 grams, two cups, or 16 ounces. You choose. I'm working with grams today for all my metric folks. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is the yeast. Now this is the brand of yeast that I use. It's called Saf Instant or Safe Instant. I don't really know exactly the way it's uh, pronounced, but I guess it doesn't matter. But this is active dry yeast. It just is a little bit easier. I have it in a little airtight container here. Fear not. Use my little spoon here. And what do I need? I need to tear to go back to zero. And I need 6.8 grams of yeast. Six. And a dip. Tear it again. Salt. 3%, 13.6 grams. Or a tablespoon, remember? Most excellent. Now all of these ingredients, these are the dry ingredients. We're gonna take this and just get like a fork or something like that. Let me get back up here. Let me give you the face again. Get like a fork or something. You could use a whisk as well if you wanted to and just mix this stuff up. The, the idea here is just to make sure that you have the yeast and the salt really well distributed and evenly distributed throughout the bowl. And this is because we're not actually going to need the dough to spread this stuff out. We're, we're gonna just kind of mix it up and let it ferment for a couple of days. So we need to make sure that it's really well incorporated or homo homogenized. Homogenized? Homogenized? How do you say that word? Homogenized. Homogenized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm creating words, homogenized. In this case, we're gonna use homogenized. me like this is probably pretty good. You, you, you want to just make sure that you know that you've got it all evenly spread out, the salt and the yeast. So I'm feeling like I got that pretty well done here. So now you need to get your water ready, okay? Now the reason why the recipe calls for very warm water is not just because uh, I like warm water. It's because the yeast likes warm water, okay? The yeast needs a certain temperature for it to become active and for it to do what it does. Uh, 100 degrees, 110 degrees, that's good. You know, you definitely don't want above 130 degrees because you could potentially kill the yeast and then it won't do what it needs to do, which is release the gas after it eats the sugar to create the pockets inside of the bread in between the gluten that you've developed, which we'll get into on the event. I'm not gonna get too deep into gluten development right here because I gotta save something for the show. But just know that the yeast needs that very warm water temperature in order to continue to react to the sugars inside of the dough. Uh, and that's why 
the water temperature is very hot. So I'm going to get my water running here. Usually, uh, your sink, your tap water, whatever you're using at the hottest level is more than hot enough to activate the yeast properly. So I'm just going to let it run for a second. And I'm going to fill up my little container and make sure that I have exactly 10.4 ounces by weight or 295 grams if you're metric or one and a third cups if you're going by liquid measurement or volume. Um, again, I would stress over and over again that when you're making breads or any kind of baking of any kind that you really do want to use weight. Digital scale is relatively cheap and very, very useful if you plan on doing this type of thing at home. So, um, you know, I'm doing the conversions for you, but I do recommend always scaling by weight. So let me see what I got going on here. All right, so I got my temperature good enough. So I, now this whole entire bowl of stuff that we just made, all we're gonna do is put this back on the scale. We're gonna tear it out so that it's at zero again. I'm gonna flip it to grams. And now I'm just gonna pour water until I achieve 295 grams by metric weight or 10.4 uh, ounces by actual weight. So just watch your scale. flour ratio you want to be quite accurate so definitely make sure you get that right okay so now we have all of our ingredients in the bowl right now this is what I was talking about the only thing you're gonna do here let me just get down here for a moment with you the only thing you're gonna do is mix this with your hands like this just until there's no dry flour left can one of you guys grab this thing and just lift it up so you can see inside of there just a little bit yeah that's good so this is what I'm doing. I'm just mixing it like this, just until there's nothing dry left. Just scrape it off your fingers. Make sure you keep as much of the ingredients in the bowl as possible. Mix all this stuff up. Push it together just a little bit. The only thing you're trying to achieve here is nothing dry left on the bottom of the bowl. And literally, that is it. The little bit around the edges is fine. The dough is gonna rise and it's gonna change all that. So we have literally finished the dough recipe here. Okay, here, bring that back up a little bit or something. Oh, no, 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 just okay. fold it back, just okay. fold it back. Thank you. Cool, uh, so that's it. That's all you're gonna do. You're just gonna mix it up like that until there's nothing dry left on the bottom. And now, you have to cover this with plastic wrap. Keep it somewhere warm-ish, you know, don't let it be like too cool of a spot because you want it to remain kind of at this room temperature rising. The warm water is going to take care of the internal temperature. And now you're going to cover this. And you're going to let it rise in this bowl for 8 to 12 hours. Don't touch it. Don't lift the plastic off. Put it somewhere, forget about it, for eight to 12 hours, okay? This is the beginning of the gluten development for this type of dough. One second. And this is how we're developing flavor and structure inside of the dough. And it's gonna create an incredibly delicate incredibly thin and crispy crust with very chewy center, which is what we all kind of want out of our pizza dough. It's Neapolitan style, uh, 
you know, it's nothing that anyone in the last 500 years has invented. <laughs> the people have been doing it for a long time. So I'm going to cover this up. Just some regular plastic wrap. And, you know, these things never really do work very well, the plastic wrap. So you just want to kind of cover it up as good as you can and just make sure that it's nice and tight. And if that means you need to do a couple of layers, then gall darn it, you do a couple of layers. Like this plastic wrap, let's uh, do a little promo here. Glad wrap, it says clings tight without a fight. <laughs> Boy, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but you know, joke's on me because I bought it anyway and continue to. So I guess I should just shut up. But I just wrap this up so that there's no air and you know, if you wrap it up however you need to, just make sure that it's nice and tight because inside of here is going to be a beautiful process, which I will talk about at great lengths on the 31st. Um, so this is the dough. Okay. Now this is going to sit right here on my countertop for eight to 12 hours. I'm going to go for the full 12 because I understand that the longer we let it sit, the more flavor that's going to be developed, and that's what's important. Now, at the end of that 8 to 12 hour period, whatever you choose to do, you're going to need to take that dough out of the bowl, out of the bowl and you're going to need to scale it. Now, I would cut it into about four sections, okay? So basically, what you're going to do is this. You're gonna cut it into little balls about this big. Now this is what I was telling you guys I made earlier. Now this has been sitting in my fridge since yesterday already. Uh, and it's slowly fermenting and growing. You wanna use freezer safe Ziploc bags so that it stays nice and tight, okay? And what's going on in here now is all of the structure development, all of the things that you would be doing if you were kneading the dough in a mixer or with your hands is happening here naturally with science. <laughs> that was an uncomfortable pause just for you guys to laugh at me. Um, all of the yeast is eating the sugar. The salt is controlling the yeast. They're having like a little bit of a battle inside. And what's going on is pockets of air are being created and gluten is being developed by way of this process. And all of the structure is happening this way. And at the end of three or four days, and you can put this in the fridge for up to five days if you really wanted to push it, but it might get a little funky. Uh, four days is a great amount of time. Two days is the minimum, uh, so we're good on this today. And it just it just creates that beautiful sour flavor, an incredibly delicate dough that's difficult to work with, but you know, with a little bit of practice, it's, it's not so bad. Um, and a really, really thin, super flavorful pizza dough. Uh, so at the end of 12 hours, you're going to just take what's in that bowl, put it on a floured cutting board or even just the countertop. It doesn't matter what, just make sure it's not sticky and just cut it into four even pieces. You can weigh it if you want. I actually just eye it at this point because you're going to kind of shape it into whatever it is anyway, and put it in the fridge in these freezer safe bags, forget about it. And then on the day of the event in the morning, you're going to pull these dough balls out. You're going to put them on a cutting board and, and turn them into a ball. Basically, uh, the easiest way to do it is to just kind of fold towards the center and just make it into the shape of a ball. There's not really like a, it's a, it's a practice makes perfect thing, but it is pretty much what I just said. You fold the, the edges into the center make a little ball out of it and just let it sit on the bench. We're gonna do like a two hour bench proof on the morning of, and I'll remind you guys of this uh, throughout the days as well. Uh, and then at noon on the 31st, I'll see you guys and we're going to take this, which came from this and turn it into some really, really yummy pizza. What do you think about that y'all? Um, anyway, so that's the pizza dough. Uh, I'm trying to get these guys over at Vert to make this available 
Uh, there's no guarantees on this, but it's in the info section, the recipes on the recipes. Okay, so the recipe for this is in the info section, which pretty much says word for word what I just told you guys and demonstrated. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to figure out a way to put this up as well. I don't think that it's necessary, but hopefully, we'll be able to. So, for people that missed it, um, the rest of the ingredients will be coming today. That's for sure. I'm just finishing up my little documents for the for the methods and the instructions and all that stuff. Uh, recipes and ingredient li ingredients list is today. Uh, and I will see you all in a couple of days right here in my kitchen. I might even wear the same shirt for you guys because that's what I do. I wear the same clothes. Oh, and I forgot to say one thing. I'm really excited about my guest for this particular Cooking with Tomo. You guys have heard me talk about him a little bit. His name is Brendan Brazier. Here's one of his books, The Vegan Nutrition Guide to Optimal Performance in Sports and Life. Brendan Brazier. Now, you guys, I've spoken a little bit about me becoming a plant-based human being, uh, trying not to use the word vegan too much because I am not really a vegan in the sense that I still wear leather shoes, so I can't really call myself full-on. But when it comes to food, I'm 100% plant-based these days, and Brendan Brazier is... You know, it's kind of like getting Barack Obama to come speak at your high school about politics. That's kind of like what we have with Brendan Brazier here in the topic of plant-based nutrition and athletes and just diet and nutrition and lifestyle, well-being, health across the board. This guy is like a superhuman, super athlete. He runs up mountains uh, for breakfast. You know, <laughs> this, guy, this guy leaps over mountains for breakfast. Um, and he is considered one of the world's foremost experts on plant-based nutrition, specifically geared towards athletes. Uh, so we feel definitely very lucky to have him on as a guest. He's going to call me on all my bullshit for my facts when it comes to the food. And that's why I'm excited to have him here because he's going to be able to give us some real expert insight on some of these arguments that we've been having online about whether or not you need to have meat and dairy in your diet. <laughs> he is definitely the guy and he's going to be here and and I even get to, t to tease you guys a little bit. I have a very, very, very special guest who's going to stop by just for fun and uh, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but we've known each other for a very long time. Uh, 30 Seconds to Mars and this guy have been in business together before and, you know, I think it's, it'll just be fun to have somebody stop by and say hello. And you know. There's no way to know. You got to tune in on the 31st to find out for sure. And uh, I'm really excited. It's going to be a good one. It's a whole new Tomo. It's a whole new world. And if you want to get tickets, down below there's a little button that says Get Access. Uh, right there you can see all of your options, whether it's just the live, the digital download, uh, the golden ticket, or VIP. And the VIP section this time is going to be really cool, and I'll tell you why, because I'm going to be talking to Brendan, and we're going to be doing a little bit, quite a bit more in-depth conversation about plant-based nutrition, and, you know, a lot of people, I feel, are actually interested in it. Certainly, people are constantly trying to learn what is truth and what is fiction, and people like Brendan are, you know, really the only people people that can give us the, the kind of real scientific answer, which is the only real truth at the end of the day when we're talking about this kind of stuff. He's, uh, he's an expert, he's a nutritionist, he's living proof and a perfect example of what his products and what his discoveries can do for a person. Uh, I'm excited, I hope you guys will join me. Spread the word. Cooking with Tomo number three, The Vegetarian's Revenge is in full effect in just a couple of days. Uh, the kitchen is clean. The kitchen is ready. The dough is made. I got dough everywhere, by the way. I got ingredients all over the place, and we're even going to make dessert vegan style. So recipes and ingredients today, equipment list today. Uh, the dough is there. I will be on Twitter and stuff all day long answering questions, um, uh, so don't hesitate to ask. All right? So that's going to be the end of this little sesh 
and then we'll see you guys in a couple of days. All right. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.